Good afternoon, this is Kara Coffey of the Ministry of Uncovering No More. I thought really, really, really hard about typing this. But I happen to know that right now, people, including myself, are having a hard time reading a whole lot other than what we're supposed to read. And I am forming a new cult. <laughs> Because honestly, after 50 years of Protestant, steeped in Catholicism, because my mother's family was Protestant Catholicism thingy going on in my life, you know, if I'm not a part of a cult, I don't, uh, I don't know what to do with myself. But <laughs> my cult's a free one, because I'm choosing it and calling it a cult. <laughs> but I'm making light of a word that's very real live my life. You've got to have a few words that you just let go. It's not as serious, okay? Because we live in a society that is, I mean, every single commercial, let's just take laundry detergent. They want you to buy their laundry detergent. So all the commercials are going to be really, really dramatically positive towards you buying that laundry detergent. Now multiply that about a million times in a week. And that's what just the common American me has to deal with. And you, doesn't matter what our politics are, doesn't matter what we experienced in this life or didn't experience in this life, that is the fact. And how much TV do you watch? Because most people watch way more TV than I do. Now, when it comes to social media, I'm embarrassed about my history, but I'm coming out of it and I chose quite some time ago and actually have friends that help me. You know, don't be ashamed about what you had to walk out of to be where you are now. If you hadn't lived that, you couldn't have lived this. And runestones is what keeps me strong there. Um, you cannot be the person you are without the previous experiences. Now, there are apologists for, for instance, um, the black skinned people in America being okay with the fact that their ancestors were treated that way. I am not one of those people. I am not, okay, we were white trash. The babies actually owned slaves by the time my grandfather, who died in a street, according to the book of Revelation, just like my brother did twice, he was, he was a poor farmer. He and Grandma De Era, Davis Betty, they were poor farmers, and they had a lot of kids. Both sides of the family had a lot of kids, the Davises and the Beatties and slip over to the, my mama's clonic side and it was all that way. All big families. And so I'm one of the last remaining big family type people out there because that really does need to pass away. That whole narrative needs to pass away. Um, a matter of fact, I just posted something from Jamie McNeil over at Smirking Chimp who, I mean, sometimes I'm jealous of his perspective for my father who is no longer here. I wish my dad could have had his perspective, but that's the thing is he's definitely a father or grandfather figure to, it would be a father figure to me, but a grandfather figure to say my kids uh, that I would appreciate it if they would listen to his perspective. And he writes regularly for Smirking Chim. And so I put the article up. I would have loved to have done artwork, didn't have time today. So I'm trying to just be okay with the fact that I can't always do artwork for these people that I really, really respect. I really believe that I should be willing to spend time with them. But here's where my cult comes into play. I am having to be really strict on my own private time to uh, um, poets, the poets that are reforming my life for me. Because honestly, they bring the perspective of God, at least, into much more balance than the current Protestant and Catholic societies are doing. And that's the point of this. So hold on to your hat for a second, because this is a hard concept that I'm about to get out. And what the concept is, is that, well, it has a little bit to do with the difference between Jamie McNeil, who's probably slightly younger than my dad and and my dad there's a there, they understand I have to be thankful for 
my upbringing, but I also know the pain of my upbringing. I also know what I had to walk off of. I know what the losses are. Okay, and so, you know, I, I know that the grass isn't greener on the other side at this point in my life. Maybe I didn't know that when I was younger, but I know it now. And so, what I'm really saying is, I'm coming to grips with the fact that I had to live this very life. But here's the point right here. The black people should never, ever, from the generations past, should not do this. You cannot do this in America. I don't know about other countries, y'all. But I do know about the 200, over a little over 200 year history of America. And I am white. So... I know that black people that are my age and older, I wouldn't say, you know, and I'm almost 60, I don't know about you younger generations because your parents had freedoms as well as black, you know, you can say that my great grandparents, this terrible, these terrible things happened, okay? I want you to think about this and don't hate on me right here. But now we have all different skin colors being shot in public schools, and they're going to have that history too, that these horrific things happen to me. Some of them are going to be black, and some of them are going to be white-skinned and Asian-skinned and brown-skinned. So tragedy happens on a large scale, and that's when it's called genocide, and genocide was enacted and still is occasionally enacted on the black community and we're having to fight for the education of our children all different skin colors to be more balanced than it has been ever ever in this country public or private school matter of fact public school will enter the realm of being more balanced faster than the private schools because of the aforementioned real cultishness i'm talking about so that's what I'm dealing with right now. It's a mishmash of the melting pot that America actually is and how evolved we've actually become. And I want to talk about genre. Genre. Let me, I, sadly, I'm going to have to use black skin examples, but I could use my womanly white skin example just as easily. And I just did in a roundabout way. So I'll try to bring it down to earth with myself after I do this. Bill Cosby. Loved that show of his. And, you know, the wife was Claire in the show and they had the children. I can't remember what the show is. Then we found out, and he's been in jail okay so here's the bottom line and this is where i talk about runes and it doesn't matter the skin color you need to listen to me bill cosby needed to come to grips in his life privately that does not take away from the justice he should receive publicly i can have compassion for a struggle someone has privately but when you meet that to the population and abuse women, children, other men, in Bill Cosby's case, that is a different narrative. And no man is an island. No woman is an island. And justice is justice. Should be, isn't in America. There's too much racism, sexism, bullying uh, uh, someone that is a, my friend on, on Twitter and I think I put this on my blogs you know the Trump crime family is very real that's not basically that's not white supremacy that put Trump there that's a whole bunch of shit okay it is white supremacy that's one of those issues and, and we all know that Donald Trump has not paid attention to his own soul his entire life. That's because he doesn't have one. He's a monster that can be used that way. 
I'm not going to say that for Bill Cosby. I don't know. But I do know that he is an example of somebody who... I, I can see had issues in his private life and it ended up affecting his public life and hurting people. That's, that's a disconnect that we do not talk about. And I will tell you exactly where it came up in my life so that you can understand I know this because I experienced it. And I want to say one other thing. Fuck the idea that you have to have experienced something to know about it. You can fuck that idea. No, you do not. I do not need to have been treated like the dear black people who were enslaved in this country to tell you that I understand something of what they're facing. If that wasn't true, I wouldn't at the beginning of this particular YouTube told you, black people, you can't think this way. I was a white woman who needed to think this way because of what happened to me. And I happened to champion the use of black people, white people, Asian people, all people using runestones, particularly, so that you can nurture your private self. You can love yourself. And that in and of itself will help you love your neighbor in your community, period. Across the board, doesn't matter who you are. So there's a universalism there. But what I'm talking about here, I will give you my example because I just, I did experience it. But stop with the demoralizing bullshit that everybody, that you don't listen to anybody, first off. Because I've had that told me, I don't listen to anybody. And I have people in my life like that. And they are very close-minded. God bless you. Bye. But it is not necessarily true <clears throat> that you had to have known that suffering <clears throat> to speak an encouraging word. Teaching? Fuck off. I've been taught all my life. Most teaching in the United States of America, all small letters, fuck off of it. Most of us are overtaught and hurting inside. So I don't, I don't want to hear about your educations. I don't want to hear about your qualifications. I don't want to hear what you think is disqualifying you. I treat you as an intelligent individual because I know you are. If you're not a monster like Donald Trump. If you're a monster like Donald Trump, you ain't going to be listening to any of us billions like me. Okay? Boom. Done. So, the perspective that I will give you an example of that I did experience horrifically and had to come out of the degradation of was that my mother hid her past from me her entire life. But she had an extremely powerful daughter. An empath. Sorceress. Pagan some. Agnostic some. You name it, I've been it. In the spirit world. Archangel. And by the end of her life, she couldn't come clean with me. And I was there for my mother since, basically since the day my brother died the second time. Never mind that he's back. This is about my mother's life and my life, our relationship. Um, <clears throat> she... I had to come to the place, it was either early this year or late last year, that I had to admit, you know, my compassion for my mother doesn't reach this. She should not have done this to me. And she was a moral good woman. So, you know, she came out of a lot. God bless her. But, and, and she's resting in peace. I, if there's anybody who knows when a parent is resting in peace, it would be me. And, I, and there's a bunch of me out there. We're spiritualists and we, we get it, but we have to hide our lives. So, grain of salt here. Don't judge me and don't call me arrogant. Oh my fucking God. I've been called so many things. And, and, and I'm just, don't, don't label me anymore. Just stop. 
just stop. Stop labeling each other is what I'm saying. Oh, my God. Y'all are just doing so much damage to yourselves and each other in your just general pra practice of discussion that it's just like you've got to change this. I don't care who you are. Change this narrative. But so when I got to the point of saying I, ca I can't, you know, a lot of people expect you to give them compassion and only them compassion. I've got, I've got one or two people in my life like this. They're very draining on me as an empath. Okay. They're getting better. I'm getting stronger. I've got friends who are actually encouraging me. I'm not going to say where and telling me, you know, you'll get it back up. It's all on my blogs. So if you want to know who's helping me and I'm we're there with them, I'm not going to say I'm helping them, but they're helping me and I'm openly, I'm willing to admit it. Go look at my blogs. I got 13 of them. Um, but when I reached that point, I realized this distinction and, and, and I just told you about Bill Cosby and I can think of others where they have this huge life. It, it's a nice life. And then you find out under the surface. Okay. And I'm not talking about the obvious criminal types. I'm talking about the normal people. And so, you know, what do you do with that? Well, first off, your trust is impacted. And, and, and all of you who are really big into TV, your trust has been impacted a billion times. All of you who are into churches, your trust has been impacted so much you don't have any left. Protestant, Catholic churches, you don't have anything to trust. You sit your asses in those chairs however long you do, you know, like once a week or whatever. You can't trust those people. You can't trust them. They have fucked us over so much. And they like it that way. So, you know, I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about the obvious shit. I'm talking about a less obvious situation going on here. And you have to differentiate. I have to differentiate. It's going to be different for every person. We shouldn't judge each other about it. I just want you to know that I understand this is here. And Bill Cosby, sadly, did not take care of his own soul. For whatever his reasons, he did not do that his, in his life. And I'm begging you to, to make new habits. Meditate. Find your support systems. That's what I'm doing. I'm having to rebuild support systems and everything because of what happened to me in Christian Christianity and Catholicism since I was born. Okay. Um, have a place where you hear your inner self. Nurture yourself. I'm not saying that the temptations surrounding you are going to be any easier. I'm not saying that. I wished I could. Sincerely wished I could. But I cannot do that. So then why would this be worth my time, Kara? To know yourself. Because you need to know yourself. I need to know myself. And I'm a mother of people. Like ten of them. So... I am a woman who turned to my two oldest and said at different times, do you know if you love yourself? My son born on my birthday, and we're having some beautiful conversations, and we're getting into poetry because we're kind of in the same boat with, you know, our whole lives, friendship bases and everything just were removed. Now, he's got work, see, and I didn't have that, so it's a little different for me than him, but nonetheless, we... we we do think about these things and understand that we're in a very shifting society these days. And um, so we're having to come to grips, my son and I, with all of these things that happen in our family and normalize the goodness and leave behind the ugly and I want you to be able to do that but when my son when I asked my son do you know do you love yourself do you know I don't know and then I watched him go through a process of, of finding out and making sure that he loved himself and since he had been extremely just like his mother my oldest five are just like me we're just like are just like me. I mean, we just we did the best we could to obey, to trust and obey. 
there's there's six people here. We were raised in Christianity, and it might be seven or eight. I'd have to talk to my uh, sixth and seventh child. I, I don't. I wonder what their perspective is. I don't know because they they were in a transition uh, more than the first five. And when we apologized for the strict upbringings that we that we had and stuff as yes, parents, of course, and I, and then we we moved out of Christianity. And we all got pretty much broken at that point. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff that happened. And so we're having to walk out of, a, of that and form our own personal relationships with ourselves in love and also refinding other relationships. That's all I know right now. And so he was honest and said, no, I, I don't know. So I, here's mama, mama here. I have a lot of kids. Um, and let me just tap back to Jamie, <laughs> Mr. Jamie, because he said we should limit family size. And I agree with him. Now, I wouldn't have been ready to say that because I was supposed to have those 10 kids. But I'm going to say this. I, nobody should have 10 kids anymore. Do you think it, you should, we should have a limit, Kara? Well, I think four is a good limit. I do. You don't want your children to be only children. I can tell you that. If you're going to have children, and I, I advocate all the time for, for, for couples not to have children. So, you know, um, four or five maximum. Uh, I have raised two families. I'm very aware of that. And I was called to it, but I don't, I don't think anybody else should be anymore. I mean, there was a specific calling on my life. I can tell you exactly why I had to do that. But um, Mr. Jamie's actually advocating for um, the legality of it. And I, I agree with him. And I would not have done that as a Christian. I would not have. And they're behaving that way. I can guarantee you that 100% accurately right now. And they don't believe in personal rights. They do not. They're cults. They're real cults. So, my poetry reading cult, I'm doing it today. I'm driving up right now to a place that I love. And Elizabeth Barrett Browning and I are going to have a moment. Because I am doing her 44 verse, 44 um, sonnets, sonnets from the Portuguese. And so, today I get to do another one. See, so I, this is my cult. <laughs> and, and I had to talk that way. Okay. So, attending to our soul is something that we don't want to do, and I don't understand why, but I can tell you that it's a hard thing, but then once you get there and practice, you will love yourself. You can choose to choose to choose to love yourself and do it and make it happy, even if you're a person who struggles with depression, and I've got some people in my life who are very negative or who are very autistic and have, do not know how to express or even acknowledge emotion. And they can do this too. It's a discipline. And it is not bad to have disciplines. No matter who we are. No matter what our struggles are. No matter what our triumphs are. No matter how much money or how little money we make. Okay? And we need to make these distinctions. Somebody like Bill Cosby, somebody like Kara Coffey, who can tell you, I had to reach a point in, a, in my, what the Christians would term a perfect life. I had a large family. I was a perfect girl. I obeyed just like my five kids, perfect lives. We've all got perfect lives. Now, under the service, we've got some brokenness, just like everybody else. But we were all, all six of us, obedience was a big deal to us. And we've got scars in our lives, and some of us can't even reach each other because of what Christianity and Catholicism have done to us. And I have got the YouTube that I cried through yesterday. So, you know, I cried my, head, my heart out yesterday. And it is pain like that that brings me back to YouTube saying, this is a distinction. So this is going on two blogs because I've already put up Mr. Jamie and agreed with him. 
shock of shockers, except for I'm the gal that has been boycotting different things and stuff for all my life, all my ministerial life, because I understand that this shit exists and that we need to change it from the bottom up. And if we're not nurturing ourselves in this society, there is no one that's going to nurture us unless you're connected to someone like me because I do try and I've got people in my life that do try. All 10 of my children are this way. When I was being very broken yesterday on YouTube and getting it on blogs with artwork and stuff, that's one of the things I told you. So that's all I know in this day and age. But this differentiation you know, you probably should want a psychiatrist or a doctor of some sort or some specialist or, heaven forbid, a pastor of a church. Fuck no. But you know what I'm saying? You want somebody that's qualified to say this. Well, I don't have any qualifications <laughs> other than I keep showing up. <laughs> but not to church. Because I, I did do that, and I'm broken. So there is a distinction and I used Bill Cosby and myself. This is Kara Coffey of the Ministry of Uncovering No More.